Emily and we are doing a panellist talk today on the benefits of breastfeeding. Um, so I'm joined with Dr Brittany Allen today. Just Brittany, I know as soon as I said it. <laughs> um, and she is a certified doula and lactation counsellor. And then I'm also joined with Dr Deepu Abraham, uh, a consultant in neonatology and paediatrics. Um, so, uh, Brittany, do you want to just give a bit of information about yourself so our viewers can learn about you? Sure, sure. Um, I'm Brittany Allen. I'm a certified doula lactation counsellor and a pregnancy yoga teacher here in Dubai. Um, I am hired by couples to help them prepare for pregnancy, um, birth and breastfeeding. So, um, we just do a lot of... Um, education during pregnancy to help them have a better start um, for their labor and breastfeeding journeys. Amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, Dr. Deepu, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, I'm Dr. Deepu Abraham. I'm a consultant, pediatrician and neonatologist. Uh, I'm based at uh, Suleika Hospital, Dubai. Uh, we are having a level three neonatal unit. So uh, we basically take care of all preterm babies and uh, as well as the term babies and we run a pediatric unit as well. I've been working there for the last four years. Oh lovely, amazing. It's lovely to meet you both. Um, I'm very excited to ask you some questions um, today all about breastfeeding to give you a little grilling. Um, right, so first question is for Dr. Abraham. So I was just wondering, um, somebody's asked how long should you breastfeed for um, and what are the benefits of extended breastfeeding? Yeah, I mean, uh, there is uh, no real cutoff yeah. uh, for breastfeeding because as uh, I mean, don't have to stress it again and again, we know we all know the benefits of breastfeeding. Uh, we know the benefits of exclusive breastfeeding. Uh, so, I mean, in terms of the the benefits that the breastfeeding provides, it is the duration of breastfeeding that 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 matters the most. So the basic uh, concept of exclusive breastfeeding, the minimum duration that we consider to, for complete breastfeeding is still six months yep. because babies are not supposed to have anything other than milk until six months, so until they start uh -huh. the breastfeeding. Uh, but that depends. Like you said, it's not for everyone. So it, the, the, the situation varies. Yeah, um, so, but uh, we advise generally for those moms who can and who, who prefer to, uh, to continue breastfeeding mm -hmm. until one year or until two years yeah. because you can always carry on with breastfeeding uh, because yeah. it is one it is not beyond one year it is not the nutrition side of things that we are yeah, concerned yeah. more it is more the overall development the bonding and the rest of the factors so there is no definite cutoffs but yeah. uh, two years two and a half years I mean, that's that's perfectly fine amazing that's so interesting to know that there's not a a cut off time it's like right it's not it's not beneficial anymore for you you can keep going as long as, as you want to i think that's exactly beautiful. um so Brittany, you're a doula and now i never experienced a doula when i gave birth to either of my girls um and i never fortunately needed any lactation support and things like that you know i feel quite lucky um because i know lots of people that did yeah. um so as a doula how do you prepare mothers when it comes to breastfeeding i know you prepare them for birth of course yeah. Um, and you're there when they give birth as well if they want you to be as yes. well. Yeah. So how do you prepare them for the breastfeeding side of things? Sure. Um, does it begin before they give birth, once they've given birth? What the... Yeah, so most, um, if not all doulas, have some breastfeeding um, training within our doula training courses. Uh, but a lot of us have gone on to specialize in breastfeeding and receive uh, further education to become lactation counselors. Yeah. So, um, for me, I offer a, a, an entire prenatal session on breastfeeding, um, on how to initiate the breastfeeding or actually how to uh, let your baby initiate breastfeeding after they are born, um, what it should look like, um, how it should feel, because we always hear about how painful it is and yeah. um, we know that it shouldn't be. Um, so if it is painful, there's an issue, something's uh -huh. not right. So um, we go through lots of visuals, videos on how a latch, a correct latch should look, um, 
how to um, prepare your partner as well on how that they that, can yeah. support you because with breastfeeding, it's really all about having the right support around you uh -huh, because it, it, it can be a really exhausting um, journey. Um, so you need the right people around you. Um, and so in our sessions, we, we, we share all of that information so that people kind of have an idea of what to look for and they're not shocked um, yeah. when, when this journey begins. Yeah, so we definitely do that prenatally. I love that you've, um, you're including husbands and partners oh, yes. as well. Um, for me, my husband was definitely a crucial person yes. role um, when it came to breastfeeding as well, because once you give birth, you don't remember things. And I remember my husband saying to me like, oh, don't forget, you need to do this. Or do you remember what they said? Do this, yeah. do that. So it's it's really, really important that yeah. they are prepared as well. Um, that's really good. Yes. So um, another question I have got for you, um, Brittany, is um, preparing for birth with when it comes to regards to colostrum. Would you recommend mothers expressing it beforehand or would you recommend you know just once they've given birth well it's definitely something that more women are doing now yeah it um, wasn't a thing it used a to not be a thing yeah. yeah um and i think for a lot of women they don't even realize that they have colostrum already uh -huh. before yeah. the baby's born um so we do know now that um collect harvesting colostrum in the pregnancy at the end of the pregnancy can be helpful especially if there are any latch issues with your newborn so instead of having to go straight to um needing formula to top up your baby or if there's an issue with your baby's latch if you've harvested some colostrum at the end of your pregnancy then you have that to offer your baby instead mm -hmm. um so you're still able to give them the colostrum that they need um even if they can't latch or even if they're in the NICU for some reason yeah. um so it's not a must for everyone um some women can find it a little overwhelming to think about doing this before they've had their baby. So we always want um, pregnant people to do what feels right for them yeah. individually, but um, it's definitely something that has become more popular and there are benefits to having um, it harvested just in case those... Um, do, do you pr produce colostrum before you've ever had, like after your first baby, but before your first baby? I don't yes, ever remember having yeah. it before Saoirse, but with Sienna, like it was there it was there yeah yeah, yeah you yeah, do yeah. so you should have it like when we talk about um harvesting colostrum it can be any time like from 37 weeks you should get, you can start oh, kind of harvesting yeah, yeah. um there is a little concern that sometimes there's stimulation might cause uterine contractions yeah, yeah, yeah. um so you have to be careful with that but um especially if you knew your baby was gonna be in the NICU if you if you know you have a baby that you that might not be that. well at birth then you, I would definitely recommend um harvesting the colostrum beforehand Amazing. yeah there we go who knew there's so much yeah. to learn about colostrum <laughs> it's magic yeah. um so I've got another question for Dr um Abraham when it come um when will my milk comes in is a big question that is asked by so many mums. And I know there is no science to say on day three, it will come in. Um, but do you have any advice that you can give to mums when it comes to that big concern of like, am I gonna produce enough? When is it gonna come in? Things like that. Do you have any yeah, advice? Definitely, I mean, that is uh, when I do the daily rounds uh, to see the babies in the morning, yeah. the, you can see that stressful look on the face of mums. And this is exactly the question they asked me. But uh, I mean, that, that's a very uh, real issue because as far as a mom is concerned, we don't know exactly how much milk baby is giving. Yeah. So you don't know how much baby is getting. Uh, so the only thing which we can do is, I mean, the first reassuring things for parents is that all babies have a good reserve. So it yeah. is physiological that it is very much understood that the milk flow will be very slow in the first 24 hours. So babies are born with a inbuilt reserve. So yeah. they have a glucose store which will which will manage even if the milk is less. So that is perfectly fine. Uh, the, the 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 clues by which we can say whether the baby is uh, the milk is enough or not is one is uh, the, uh, the 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 urine output. The, all babies are supposed to pass urine uh, not in the first twenty four hours but after yeah. after twenty four hours they are supposed to pass urine around four times or four to five times. Yeah. If baby is passing urine four to five times, that means baby is getting approximately yeah. enough volume of milk. Uh, the second factor is like uh, is the baby consolable? For example, after twenty four hours, mm -hmm. forty eight hours at night, baby is crying, and if after a feed, if the baby is consolable, that means that baby is getting some milk. Yeah, but. 
you you should uh, accept the fact that the amount of milk that the baby is getting will be less in the first 24 hours 48 hours uh-huh. so mom will have to feed more frequently uh-huh. so the frequency can vary between maybe every hour every 2 hours let the baby decide when yeah, the baby yeah. is waking up when baby is demanding yeah. uh, so this is applicable to almost all babies term babies there are exceptions there are exceptions course, where yeah. for example who moms who are diabetic Uh, those babies are at a slightly higher risk for their blood sugar to drop mm-hmm. in such cases we do monitor we keep a close eye on them on the babies just to make sure that the sugars are fine yeah. but in all other cases all normal cases not high risk cases it is perfectly fine uh, to feed more frequently yeah. uh, and uh, look for these signs to see whether they are getting enough or not amazing thank you so one of the questions that was asked online um and it's an- This question is open up to either of you to answer. Um, is I'm going back to work. Should I even start breastfeeding? I know that the maternity time in Dubai is like six weeks or something like that. Um, I'm very fortunate I didn't have to return back to work. Um, but how would you advise mothers to cope with? You know, after six weeks of being at home, your, your milk supply levels are just kind of in a routine. You're just finding yourself again, and then you have to kind of leave your baby to go back to work. How would you? Ad- advise and help mothers um that are kind of apprehensive about starting breastfeeding or um not wanting to stop once they have started and going back to work what would your advice be for that yeah i mean it is one of the common common issues yeah. and along with it it, it a similar situation of the moms who are admitted with preterm babies yeah of course uh, because you you have all these antenatal classes you are fully prepared for this and then us the neonatologist will come in and say sorry we'll have to take the baby to the icu yeah it may be for a genuine reason it is for a genuine reason but that is that completely breaks the rhythm and yeah. many moms are anxious can i really breastfeed the baby yeah. uh, so it is these are the two things one is going to work but even before that yeah, getting admitted in yeah. icu so in both these situations we manage we have to manage it in the similar way the main thing which we talk to mom is that the importance of expressing Yeah. because when the baby is not uh, sucking milk directly from the breast which is the major stimulus for producing breast milk yeah. uh, it is very important that they start expressing mm-hmm. so the initial expressing can be hand expression but uh, like after a few days it will be better with uh, breast pumps pump, yeah. so the regular expression means like maybe once every 3 hours yeah and and it's very important to express at night as well yeah. at least once to express at night that will that will keep on uh, increasing the milk flow and it will make sure that the uh, lactation will be successful so regular expressing maintaining that that will keep on going uh, so that we can give the milk to the baby in the icu and the same thing can be continued once you are planning to go back to work so you yeah. start practicing to express mm-hmm. uh, and you express and, and 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 there are different ways in which you can store the milk as well so mm-hmm. if you definitely know that you are going back to work in in few weeks time you can start expressing there are many moms who have plenty of milk yeah. so you can start expressing early on and then you can start storing them you can store them in uh, refrigerator you can store them in the freezer it can store them in the normal thing yeah. depending on that you can store it for longer periods yeah. so you can use that as a backup when you are away mm-hmm. plus at the same time many workplaces have leeway to uh, to come and and and, and feed yeah. as well so yeah expressing storage plus uh, preparing mentally for that yeah. ahead do you have anything else yeah. to add on those points um no i think he covered everything yeah. um i think it's important to talk about these things so with with the, like with the moms that i work with um if i know that they're going back to work then this is definitely something else that we cover um either prenatally before the baby's born or yeah. or, or in their postnatal stage before they go back to work um i think it's just important that um again if it, it's something that feels right for them yeah. um because if they're already having to deal with leaving their baby and going back to work yeah. um and then if this is too much for them then you know we never want it to feel that way for for people um so i think organization um yeah early on is is key and like uh, doctor said you know expressing and starting to store up uh, supply for would your baby would you recommend just exclusively expressing and giving bottles or would you you know when you're back home from work you know continue to feed yourself like would would a uh, baby get confused with things like that or um 
I don't think I would recommend one or the other. I think again, whatever what feels best. right for them. Yeah. Um, I think I, a lot of women do enjoy the like the feed before they leave to work and then yeah. the feed that they get when they come back Definitely. home. So yeah. they still get that time with their baby. Um, so yeah, I think that was amazing. it. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for answering some questions. Does anybody have any questions that they want to ask when it comes to breastfeeding or anything like that? No, do we have time for one more question? Yeah, amazing. Okay, so um, this again is open to either of you. What are some ways that mothers can increase their milk supply? You see them kind of posted everywhere, these cookies and teas and things. Is there anything, you know, any advice that you can give um, on kind of something that you know would, would really help a mother? So the cookies and teas can be really helpful. Um, they don't work for everyone. I think it's really important that more people know that the best way to increase your milk is to feed your baby more. Um, that the baby is the most effective at stimulating milk supply. So even with the best pumps in the world, the, the baby's still better. Um, so if you are concerned about milk supply or you feel like you're low your milk is getting less uh -huh. um feed baby more um yep. so it's always supply and demand that's advice to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah i mean the the cookies can help they kind of give you a burst um but long term it's going to be better to better just to keep, keep feeding yeah. yeah and the body will respond hopefully yeah, yeah i completely agree with that uh, i mean the the basic uh, advice is always uh, the more relaxed mother is the more sleep she has the more uh, uh, more she's enjoying the whole process yeah. rather than getting tensed up and worked up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, mothers always ask, is there any one particular diet that will increase the milk? Uh, unfortunately, there is no uh, particular diet that increases, yeah. but uh, overall balanced nutritive diet. Uh, and one uh, probably misconception is that uh, some mothers ask, should I drink a lot of milk? Uh, should I ask more really? diary? I've yeah. Never heard that. <laughs> yeah. Drink milk to produce more milk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, it is the contrary because uh, we find many babies having problems with allergies and uh, skin problems yeah. where the maternal uh, cow's milk intake is more or, mm. or significantly high. So, in such cases, we actually advise the other way around to cut it down. So that is not uh, that is not a not a factor at all. Yeah. Uh, medications. There are certain medications. Uh, I mean, not in the initial period. Always yeah. stimulation is the best thing. Yeah. The early onset. I mean, uh, like I said, the earlier you start. I mean, rooming in and uh, early st initiation of the breastfeeding, plus regular uh, stimulation. That is the key. Yeah. But in some instances, we tend to give. There are medications which can improve the mm -hmm. uh, flow as well. So we try uh, our gynecology uh, counterparts, they prescribe mums with certain medications in certain yeah. uh, certain areas, especially when they're having preterm babies where we are desperate yeah. to have breast milk, yeah. which is necessary for the babies uh, with sensitive thing. But yeah, there are some mild medical options which will help, but basically it is uh, regular stimulation. And, yeah, uh, I'm definitely one of those people. The more natural approach, the better, yeah. rather than jumping straight to medication, especially with a baby. You don't know what's going to come through your milk then into them. Well, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. It was a pleasure to meet you both and have a conversation about breastfeeding. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank See you. See you later. Thank you.